Welcome back to Echo Ridge and another episode here in our Ultimate Beginner's Guide. We have a couple of new things going on in the colony. Our first harvest of meal lice has started to come in. And because of that, Pei is over here harvesting from the mealwood plant. Once that is done, a little bit of meal lice pops out. And this is where our first lesson comes into play. And that is on maintaining your food supplies. Notice that that meal lice says it is unrefrigerated. And because it is unrefrigerated, it's going to end up spoiling quicker. Additionally, the meal lice is exposed to pollution, which is also accelerating the food's decay rate. More on that in a few minutes. For now, though, we're going to check out this printing pod. Before you go into a printing pod, you need to think to yourself, am I ready to take in another dupe on this colony? Well, we know we have plenty of dirt. I'm sure we can find five more mealwood seeds. Yeah, we'd have to add another cot. Maybe another mess table, but I think we'd be okay to add a fifth dupe. A fifth dupe would give us more on duplicate labor. And that is another thing that I'm going to try to keep highlighting during today's episode. And that has to do with the benefit of having more duplicate labor. And whether or not the payoff for having to support another duplicate will be worth it for your colony. In this pod specifically, I'm actually interested in Lindsay here. Lindsay is a farmer. They don't have any other interests, which is a negative to selecting this dupe, but they already start off with a very strong farming skill at a plus nine to agriculture, which means they're going to be able to harvest faster, they're going to be able to fertilize and tend to crops quicker, and they're going to be giving a bonus 30% on whether or not they're going to be able to get a seed from the plant when it's harvested. Additionally, they have green thumb, which gives them a plus three to agriculture right off the rip. So by selecting this Lindsay and printing them out, we can see that they not only get the plus nine to agriculture they were intended to start with, but because they have the green thumb, they have a 12 in agriculture, further increasing harvesting speed, tending speed, and the seed chance. Now the seed chance is important because as these duplicates are harvesting the plants, notice no seeds are coming out. And that's because in the case of this pay here, they have an agriculture of zero. So their seed chance is a 0%. That's not to say that any dupe with a zero agriculture will never get a seed because there is a 10% base chance for them to get a seed, regardless of their agricultural skill. Before we continue on that lesson, I need to highlight that Catalina is about to get themselves stuck. Notice they're digging up this one tile here. They hopped all the way up here, bounced up here, and now are digging out their only chances of getting back down. So before we allow them to dig it out, we're going to move them. They'll jump down and then they'll continue with their tasks. This further highlights the reason that until you get more experience, especially when you're doing these sort of dig commands, to watch the duplicates and play on slow speed. But with that new duplicate printed out, we need to make sure that we have enough food for them. So we're going to put down five more planter boxes and put mealwood seeds in there. We're also going to put down another cot and we need to put down another mess table. And this mess table is going to need its own tile. And because we're about to open this room up, we would lose our bonus to the mess hall. So we have a couple of options. One, we could just put a door here to close the room off or two, we could put a bunch more tiles in here and I'm going to elect to put the tiles. Why? Because I know we're going to get more duplicates and going to need more mess tables. Back to our meal lice. Notice that right now it says it's 93% fresh, but it is losing 13% freshness per cycle. 9% because it's unrefrigerated and 4% because it's in a normal atmosphere. There are a couple atmospheres that make this a little bit better. Hydrogen being one, chlorine being another, and even carbon dioxide. Well, it just so happens if we go to our materials overlay and click on the gas filter, we know exactly where there's a bunch of carbon dioxide. So temporarily, why don't we slow down the rate of decay on our meal ice by putting the ration box down here? Something else that we need to consider is this oxygen diffuser has a maximum output of 500 grams per second which we learned in the last episode, is enough to provide five duplicates worth of oxygen. Except, when I highlight over this, do you see how it occasionally gets to maximum gas pressure? 
Well, that's because the tiles directly surrounding the oxygen diffuser are filling up with oxygen. And going back to our gas filter on the materials overlay, it takes a little bit for that oxygen to sort of spread out. But because it's getting maximum pressure, it's not producing oxygen 100% of the time which means we're not producing 500 grams per second constantly. So it's probably about time to add in another oxygen diffuser. This area seems to be decent. We'll need to add another tile, and then we'll also need to extend our power lines. Our new ration box has been completed. So we can go to our old ration box, click copy settings, and paste them over this ration box. Then all we need to do to transfer everything is deconstruct this ration box or uncheck everything out of it. Now the duplicates will grab all the meal lice and the muckroot and bring it down here. Now muckroot, we don't ever have to worry about it spoiling because it is one of the natural food types that just doesn't spoil. But it also happens to be one of the food types that you can't create and you have to find inside the environment. I also wanted to highlight a problem that we've been having with Bubbles. Notice that Bubbles doesn't seem to be getting a good night's sleep. Now when we go down under Stamina, they're still getting the same change per cycle of 1030, just like Lindsay who's sleeping right next to Bubbles. The difference though is they're getting an unrested, too bright debuff. So while they're getting all the necessary rest, they're getting a significant debuff causing minus 10% to immunity and plus 10% to stress. And the reason why is because our friend Catalina here. If you remember way back from episode one, Catalina is a glow stick, which means not only are they producing radiation, but they're also producing light. And this little bit of light right here is hurting poor Bubbles sleep. There's a couple of things we could do about this. One, we could take Catalina and put them on a cot way over here, but that really wouldn't help us out in the long term because eventually we're going to put two more cots down and then Catalina would be keeping this duplicate awake. But we could also just fix this by putting Catalina on a different schedule. Right now, Bubbles, Catalina, and Lindsay are all on the same schedule. Well, if we put Catalina on their own sleep schedule by creating a Shift 3, and doing some of the work that we've done in a previous episode by setting up a nice mutually exclusive schedule and then assigning Catalina to it, well, now we don't have to worry about it because Catalina is going to be sleeping when no one else is in the barracks. Now we'll still need to make sure when it is time to put someone else into Shift 3 that they are not sleeping next to Catalina, but that shouldn't be a problem because the next cot is going to be going right here. The duplicates have filled up the ration box over here. And now when we highlight over the meal lice, you can see that we're only losing 9% per cycle because the ration box, there go the meal lice, are sitting in a sterile atmosphere. That's pretty good, but we're still going to be losing meal lice at a rate of 9% per cycle, which is why it's important to not grow too much meal lice because the duplicates will not be able to eat it in time and some of it will end up spoiling and going off. And when food spoils and goes off, it turns into a rot pile, which will eventually turn into polluted dirt. That polluted dirt ends up creating polluted oxygen, which the duplicates can breathe, but it'll give them the yucky lungs debuff, which causes them to consume even more oxygen until they no longer have yucky lungs. But speaking of polluted dirt, I have discovered a problem. Remember in the last episode when we were loading up the storage bin full of algae for our oxygen diffuser? Well, when we selected algae inside the storage bin, it was the only organic ingredient, which means when we discovered polluted dirt, it was also checked by default. This is sort of a problem because we don't want a bunch of polluted dirt sitting right here. The reason why this is somewhat of a nuisance is because A, Polluted dirt tends to be quite germy, as we can see, but also because polluted dirt, as we just said, off-gasses that polluted oxygen. In fact, we can see some right over here. Now, it's not a huge deal, considering it's right next to the oxygen diffuser, which means this area stays at maximum gas pressure quite often, but the proof in the pudding is it's still creating some polluted oxygen. Now, we're getting that polluted dirt any time that we empty these outhouses. Remember, it's turning all the dirt into polluted dirt 
because the duplicates are doing all their business in it. So here in the early game, there's two ways that we can handle our polluted dirt. One is we could use a compost, and we're going to build one of these to highlight the benefits and the disadvantages of using the compost. By highlighting over the compost in the build menu, we can see that it is able to compost 100 grams per second. And for that compost, we're going to be giving 100 grams of dirt per second. With our compost built, we can now see what it's actually going to do to our colony. And you need to think about these things whenever you put a new system or building in place. We can see that it is consuming 100 grams per second of polluted dirt, emitting 100 grams of new clean dirt, but look at that heat production. It says 1.13 kilodTUs per second. Okay, Echo, what's a DTU? If we go to one of our duplicates, for instance, this Lindsay here, since they don't have anything better to do right now, and highlight over their body temperature, we can see that they're exchanging temperature with the environment. And depending on their environment, it's exchanging a differing amount of DTUs. The DTU stands for duplicant thermal units. We can see that Lindsay has naturally as a duplicant 83.68 DTU per second. Now when we go back to our compost and see that it's producing 1130 DTUs, you then get a better idea of how much heat this one compost is producing. And even though right now the temperature change is not going to be significant enough to be able to highlight it using one of our temperature overlays, you can see that it's ranging from 26 to 27 and occasionally spiking up to 28 degrees right here. Compared that to this area, which is still sitting at 23, combining with the fact that this area over here is already warm, we need to be very considerate about how many composts we put down and where we put them because they're gonna keep producing more and more heat the longer we keep composting all that polluted dirt. And eventually this area would get warm enough to where we'd end up stifling our mealwoods beyond their 30 degree max. And no mealwood means no meal lice, which means no food for our duplicates. But it is only one compost and we're not producing a lot of polluted dirt. So why don't we set up a storage bin right over here. And once it's finished being built, we can go back to organic and select polluted dirt and then back here on our algae container we can unselect polluted dirt and quite frankly eggshells notice that when we did this it unchecked all organic materials now whenever the duplicate is ready to compost more dirt all the polluted dirt is going to be sitting right there no big deal now notice that catalina just ended up disinfecting this storage bin this is kind of a moot point just like it is disinfecting these outhouses because all the germs are staying inside the bathroom and anytime a duplicate leaves they have to wash their hands anyways so just like we disable disinfect on the outhouses we can also disable disinfect on the storage bin and the compost and that'll save us a little bit on duplicate labor speaking of duplicate labor this is requiring duplicate labor. Notice Bubbles is having to come over here and flip all the dirt and the polluted dirt so it can continue to compost. The more duplicate labor tasks that you add, the more duplicates you're going to need. The more duplicates you need to maintain all those tasks, the more food and the more oxygen you're going to need. So you can sort of see the catch-22 with duplicate labor. Right now we have four idle dupes. And as we spoke about before, this means, well, we have available room to add more tasks. But it also means we're not doing anything currently to advance our duplicate's survivability, such as digging. So we're going to set some dig commands here on priority four and allow the duplicates to go nuts. This way, anytime there is an idle dupe, well, they'll go dig, continuously expanding our colony, which additionally gives us more materials to keep our colony going, such as all this wonderful dirt we're about to dig through. Notice though, that when we dig over this, it is gonna open this mess hall up, causing it to be much too large to be considered a mess hall, because remember our mess hall has a maximum size of 64 tiles. So as we're digging this, I'm gonna put a nice little tile right there to make sure this mess hall stays a room. I also noticed that I dug five tiles high instead of the four. And to keep everything in our base symmetrical, I want to stay with the four tiles for now. 
mostly because I know this area is still going to be useful as a part of the base. Once we get further outside, you can actually flip to a method that some people use. Well, they'll dig out seven tiles and then put ladders above it and below it. And that way the duplicants can dig the top three layers from above and the four layers from below as an alternate strategy to the four tile high rows. Now, because there's a bunch of polluted dirt in this area, there's a chance that it could off gas, just like the outhouses will when it drops its polluted dirt, just like the polluted water has a potential of doing when we refill the wash basins with water and get rid of all the polluted water that's been saved up. So first, that means we probably need to do something about all that polluted oxygen, but also, is there something else we can do with this polluted dirt instead of composting it? Well, as a matter of fact, there is. If we took all that polluted dirt and just put it inside this storage bin, and because this storage bin is sitting underwater, the polluted dirt won't be able to go off. Now, some of you with a little bit of foresight may realize that eventually we're going to use all of this water in which the storage bin will no longer be submerged, which means all that polluted dirt would once again go off. So that is something we'd have to keep an eye on. But it's also not too bad of a thing to compost a little bit of it. So we'll keep one compost going and we'll store all that polluted dirt underwater. Another pod came up here at cycle 12. And in this case, I don't think we're going to take another duplicate. For one, you saw that we're not behind on duplicate tasks. Hence the reason we were seeing idle messages. But two, neither of these duplicates are very good. Yeah, May here is a tidying decorator, not too bad, but it's sort of two skills that don't really lend itself well to go together. Yeah, they can't do researching errands, which is not too big of a deal. They're a kitchen menace, which means they get decreased cuisine, but an increased food morale bonus. So as long as they're not your cook, that's not too bad. But I don't really need a duplicate that just does tidying and decorating on the side, although of the two duplicates, May is significantly better. Because Otto here has mouth breathing, which means they're going to consume an extra 100 grams per second of oxygen, which means Otto consumes twice as much oxygen as a standard dupe. So in this case, I'm just going to take the fertilizer. Now, don't allow yourself to think that this fertilizer is the same fertilizer required for mealwood fertilization. Because remember, the mealwood requires 10 kilos worth of dirt, not fertilizer. That fertilizer that we just printed out comes into play when we start adding additional fertilizer to these plants. More on that much later. Well, all this seems pretty good. We have nine tons of algae, which means our duplicates are going to be able to breathe for a little while. We have plenty of dirt for our mealwoods. So where do we go next? Well, this might be a good point to address a couple of problems while the duplicates are between digging tasks. One might be the polluted water or the polluted dirt issue. Well, the second might be this ration box issue. Notice it's flickering in and out of a sterile atmosphere. And the reason why it's doing that is because, well, occasionally oxygen is coming over the top of the ration box. To fix this, we could do a couple of things. The easiest is just to put the ration box a little bit lower. Now, all the carbon dioxide further sinks lower, and we have a little pit for our ration box to sit in. And like the tooltip says, our ration box is now 100% submerged in carbon dioxide, and it is thus 100% of a sterile atmosphere. There's actually a better way to do this, though, and that is digging one tile more. And by doing that, the duplicates are going to be able to run across our little carbon dioxide ration box pit, and they'll still be able to reach all of the rations sitting in here. Additionally, the ration box is actually four tiles high. So by having it up one tile, when we eventually remove all the carbon dioxide sitting on this tile, the carbon dioxide and the oxygen would sort of intermix again which would once again be causing the sterile atmosphere to flicker on and off. So this is a good early game solution for taking care of all your foods. But notice this meal lice is down to 62%. If a duplicate doesn't end up eating this meal lice and instead happens to grab this meal lice, and this meal lice ends up staying in the back of the ration box and starts to grow things from it, well, it's going to turn into a rot pile and eventually turn into polluted dirt. And we saw that polluted dirt creates pollutive oxygen, and we don't want polluted oxygen down here. 
because once again it'd be killing our sterile atmosphere. So what else can we do? First, in the research pane, we see that there is a refrigerator, which says it stores food at an ideal temperature to prevent spoilage. Well, this is a bit of a misnomer because it doesn't prevent spoilage, it just slows it down by a lot. Well, okay, I'm gonna click on this so we can start researching it. And unfortunately, though, we get a message that says no researchers assigned and that we're missing a research station. Taking a closer look at agriculture, you can see that it requires novice research, just like meal prep and basic farming did, but it also requires advanced research. And advanced research is conducted at the supercomputer. Okay, it looks like we gotta go find the supercomputer. And that is found down here, under advanced research. By unlocking advanced research, we will unlock the next tier of research and unlock the supercomputer where we can conduct that research. So why don't we go ahead and select it? They'll knock out employment first and then hit into advanced research. Pay has finished researching employment, which gives us access to the water cooler and the crafting station, which it says provides a gathering place for duplicates during downtime and improves duplicate morale. Well, that seems like a good idea. By highlighting over the water cooler in the build menu, you can see that it'll give us a plus one morale. It's a recreation building, and it'll require one kilo worth of water per use. If you've done some searching around the room overlay, you can see that there's a room called the Great Hall, which gives our duplicates plus six to morale. And all that is required for it is a little bit larger of a room, a decor item providing plus 20 decor, and a recreation building. Well, this water cooler is our first recreation building, so let's go ahead and put it down. It also said we needed a little bit larger of a room at a minimum of 32 tiles. So let's go ahead and expand this out a little bit. Putting down some tiles, digging up this bristle blossom, and adding a door to finish it up. With that complete, we have a wonderful water cooler here, which is going to be able to provide a duplicate plus one to morale whenever they come by and get a little cup of water. And if we go grab this wonderful little flower pot from interior decor, which also unlocks the lamp and a ceiling light, we'll be able to put the flower pot inside of the mess hall, take one of the briar seeds that we had found earlier, plant it inside the flower pot, and now when we go to the room overlay, you can see that our mess hall has turned into a great hall, which is doubling the amount of morale we're gonna be given compared to the old mess hall from plus three to plus six, which means we're gonna be able to give all of our duplicates more skills. Speaking of which, all of our duplicates have a skill point ready to assign. Well, if we remember, Pei here was our researcher. And you can see here by the heart symbol, they have an interest in doing research. So we can put them into advanced research. By highlighting over advanced research, you can see that Pei is going to be able to get plus two to science and enable them to use the supercomputer that we just finished researching. Our Lindsay also has a skill point. It's because all the duplicates that are printed out of the printing pod after your first three come with one free skill point. So for instance, Lindsay here, we know they have an interest in farming, so we're gonna provide them with improved farming one, which is gonna give them a plus two to agriculture, which we've already seen makes them even better at farming. Catalina, we knew was gonna be our builder and our digger. We could put them in either construction one, which give them a plus two to construction, but we could put them into hard digging, which you can see unlocks the ability for them to mine out very firm material. So now when we go ahead and dig out granite, it says it's a skill required dig, but we just happen to have a duplicate that can do that skill. Bubbles was also a farmer and rancher, so we'll put Bubbles into farming. And then Ari. Remember, Ari likes to cook. And while we don't have an electric grill yet, we will here shortly, we'll put Ari into grilling too. But notice putting Ari into grilling too, as we learned before, comes with a higher morale requirement. But because we now have a great hull, that's not gonna be a problem at all. The last thing we're gonna wanna do is put our duplicates into fun little hats based on the jobs that they're gonna be doing. Now, this only provides us the benefit of being able to see what the duplicate is good at from a glance. Because unfortunately, as cute as Catalina is wearing their new digging hat and as happy as they are, it doesn't give them any sort of intrinsic bonus. 
All right, we understand that in order to be able to research our refrigerator, we need to do some advanced research, which means we're going to need to put down the new supercomputer. Now, you can put the supercomputer anywhere you want. There just happens to be another room that we could take advantage of here called the laboratory. And by highlighting over the room overlay, you can see that science buildings built in a laboratory function more efficiently. So why don't we get ourselves a laboratory going? And while the laboratory does require a light source, and we learned a couple episodes ago that the printing pod does provide a light source, there doesn't seem to be a lot of room here. And we'd even have to end up moving some things around to be able to get our supercomputer under that same light source. So why don't we just build our new laboratory up here? We'll put down a new research station. Right next to it, we'll put a supercomputer. And then we're gonna add some doors. We'll leave a little bit of room for the future. And as we're building this laboratory, I'm gonna show you a little trick. Notice that I put tiles down here, and it was necessary because we needed to close in our great hall to be able to get the room bonus. Well, remember, each tile requires 200 kilos worth of resources. The pneumatic door only requires 100 kilos worth of resources. Now, granted, the pneumatic door requires copper ore, which is a much more rare resource compared to, say, sandstone or sedimentary rock. It's still less resources overall. So all things being equal, you may consider putting a pneumatic door here. But there's actually another reason why we put pneumatic doors here. Remember all that polluted oxygen? Well, pneumatic doors allow for gas flow, as you can see from all of this polluted oxygen flowing through the pneumatic door. Whereas tiles do not allow for gas flow. You can see that because this carbon dioxide isn't coming through here, which means it's not ultimately ending up into our designed carbon dioxide pit. So in this case, because we're only dealing with carbon dioxide, we could actually just dig this up, and now the carbon dioxide will be able to flow down through this pneumatic door, and then through this pneumatic door. We could also just remove these tiles here and put a door here, and that'll enable carbon dioxide flow even better. And this may come down to personal preference and depending on how metal starve your colony is, but putting a pneumatic door here can save materials and allow for gas flow. Now, in our bathrooms, I don't typically put the two-door method, and you'll see why in a future lesson. Our new laboratory is going to require some power, so we are going to put down some new lines, connecting it to our power grid, and we discovered that it does require a light source. And not only does it require a light source, remember that we want to put lights over these machines to be able to give the duplicants the well-lit buff. So we could put a ceiling light right here, and that would provide light for both the supercomputer and the research station. But we could also put a lamp. A lamp only requires 8 watts, compared to the ceiling light requiring 10 watts. So we'll put a wonderful lamp right next to our research buildings, and we left a space right in between our research buildings, and conveniently there was already some wire going through it, so our light will automatically be lit. So now when we click on agriculture, we're gonna have the research and the advanced research necessary. But look at this. Now because we have multiple research stations and a supercomputer, we just caught Catalina doing research at the research station. And we've already learned that we only want Pei to do it because Pei has a science score of 12, which gives them a plus 480% to research speed. Now, it's not a big deal, especially when you have two research stations, because Pei's doing research down here, and Bubbles is doing research up here, but Bubbles is getting the plus 10% speed for working in a laboratory, and the plus 15% speed for working in a lit workspace. And while only Pei can work at the supercomputer, because supercomputer usage requires advanced research skill, anyone can work at the research station. So once again, it could be a personal preference on whether or not you want to allow all duplicates to do basic research, but a lot of people tend to say no, that no duplicates other than our researchers are allowed to do it. To do this in mass, we can click the button with the three little dots and click disallow. Going back to pay, we will allow pay to do research, and now no one will be allowed to do any research except for pay. We also don't want pay to do research outside the laboratory because of that extra 10% bonus. So we're going to deconstruct this research station. Our next pod has discovered a duplicate that we're going to take. 
This is Bert. Bert is a tidier. And remember, all the skills that require tidying means it'd be sort of convenient to have somebody dedicated to that skill in the colony. Now, last time the pod gave us a tidier, they didn't really have any good benefits that made me inclined to pick them. But Bert here starts with a free skill. In fact, it's a useful skill in the form of plumbing. And their only negative is they don't want to hurt any critters, so they'll be unwilling to fight. So once again, we're going to take this Bert, and with our new duplicate, we're going to make sure that we assign them to a shift that has some room in it, such as shift three. We already have the cot that we built earlier available for Bert, but we don't have enough mess tables. So we're going to extend our mess hall a little bit, and this time with a few extra tiles to be able to predict future growth. And we're going to plant five more mealwood seeds. That way we have plenty of food for Bert to eat as well. And then before we forget, just like we did with Lindsay, we're going to make sure we assign Bert into their skills. Let's catch Lindsay up and prioritize Lindsay doing the farming. Now, just like with the researching, it may be advantageous for you to only have your farmers do the farming. Because when Bubbles with an agricultural skill of three or Lindsay with an agricultural skill of 14 do farming, they're going to be doing it quicker and they're going to have a much higher chance to be able to get seeds. My opinion is that farming is such a duplicate labor intensive task. I don't mind that all the duplicates do it unless, of course, we're specifically looking for more seeds. So we'll allow everybody to be able to do it. But we want Lindsay and Bubbles to have the priority. Now, Bert is a tidier and a tidier's primary skill is strength well so is supplying and storing hence you can see that Bert tidying supplying and storing skills are sort of colored a little bit differently and our tidying remember is going to include tasks such as cleaning the outhouse and this is important because when all the other duplicates get really busy and the outhouses need to be emptied we want to make sure that there's at least one duplicate able to do that so we're going to make sure Bert prioritizes doing all of the tidying skills. And even though they don't have an interest in supplying, they're still going to be very good at supplying because of their increased strength skill and storing. I like to call these duplicates pick them up and set them down dupes because they're really good at picking things up and setting them down. Because as we can see by highlighting over Bert's strength skill, they have a plus 360 kilogram carrying capacity because of their strength. They also have a plus 225% tidying speed. So even though they only have an interest in tidying, they're also going to be very good at supplying and storing things. Now in this case, even though we're going to make sure that Bert has their plumbing hat because they get that skill for free, which allows them to empty pipes, we're not quite there yet but it is a very useful skill, I'm actually going to put Bert into improved carry. And here's why. Yes, they don't have an interest in it, but they have the morale to be able to carry it. Plus, by putting them into improved carrying one, it gives them an extra two strength and plus 400 kilos to carrying capacity, whereas just putting them into improved strength only gives them the plus two to strength. But no additional improved carrying capacity besides the carrying capacity provided by the strength skill. Now we can see with Bert's 11 strength, they have 440 kilos worth of carrying capacity. And with improved carry one, they have an additional 400 kilos worth of carrying capacity. And considering that each duplicate has 200 kilos worth of carrying capacity, it gives them a total of 1,040 kilos worth of carrying capacity. Pay is hard at work at the advanced computer which is sort of similar to working at the research station. The big difference is the supercomputer requires water to work. So now we have water being used by our wash basins and our supercomputer. So as soon as Bert dropped off more water, Pei could get back to work. So now we know we need to keep even a closer eye on this water supply. At last, we have finished agricultural research, which has given us access to the refrigerator. The refrigerator is going to require 400 kilos of a raw mineral and 120 watts. But there's an asterisk behind that power requirement. Let's start by removing our ration box in this system here. And then in its place where I've already built a wire, we're going to put the refrigerator in. Our refrigerator is set up sort of like our ration box. So we're going to select all the edibles. 
and put all of our food that we have inside of it. Notice that the refrigerator says it's cooling the contents and using 120 watts worth of power. And you can see all the meal lice and the muckroot is slowly going down in temperature. And if we wait a little while, you can see that the meal lice is down to one degree and the muckroot's down to about 8.1. Somebody just dropped off some more meal lice so the temperature rose up just a little bit, and I just realized Bert still doesn't have a place to eat, so we'll remind ourselves to put down a few mess tables, putting down three, one for Bert, and two for future dupes. We're also going to put down a couple of cots to future-proof ourselves there as well. The muckroot is almost down to the target temperature of one degree. Notice that it's taking a lot longer to cool it than, say, the fresh meal lice that we just dropped off, because the meal lice here is only one kilo, whereas this muckroot is 25 kilos. And with the meal lice being down at one degree, you can see that it is now refrigerated and in a sterile atmosphere. So that its overall change per cycle on its freshness is only minus 3%. Which means this one meal lice can last a little bit longer than 33 cycles inside the refrigerator. As long as it stays refrigerated, and it stays in a sterile atmosphere. And if we wait long enough with the refrigerator, you can see that it's now no longer using the 120 watts. Once all of its food is down to one degree, so it's now in energy saver mode, which is one of my favorite features of just about any building, because 20 watts is no big deal at all. Another tip, we could also have cooled down these contents a lot quicker by just not putting muckroot inside the refrigerator because it takes a lot longer to cool 40 kilos worth of muckroot than it does 7 kilos worth of meal ice. I personally still bring all the muckroot down to the refrigerator even though it can't go off because if a duplicate ever needs muckroot, I don't want them to have to go all the way over here to be able to grab it. Instead, it's conveniently located right here in our carbon dioxide refrigerator pit. We've learned a lot this episode. We unlocked advanced research and built our supercomputer and put it inside of a laboratory. We used our new recreation building in the form of the water cooler to build our great hall. We learned a little bit about temperature management and talked about how we can get rid of polluted dirt using either the compost method or just by submerging it. We gained a couple more duplicates and expanded everything that we needed to be able to take care of them such as new meal lice, new cots, and more tables. Next episode, we're going to get a little bit further into power management and set up our first kitchen. I hope you're still enjoying this series and learning a lot. Please consider giving the video a like and commenting below to help this series do well so it reaches more new Oxygen Not Included players. Until next time, happy gaming, and I'll talk to you soon.